the intensive care unit, uh, let me just see now how it works. No, that's fine. This is uh, my potential disclosures. And the intensive care unit is the place where you probably will encounter <laughs> AKI most frequently. Um, as Eric Kosti could very nicely show in this, uh, it's a, one of the only prospective observational trials looking at the epidemiology of AKI in intensive care units. And then you can see that about 60% of patients uh, in the ICU uh, develop AKI uh, at some stage, and about 25% uh, of those patients are requiring AKI. It's not only AKI stage one you're seeing. You, you will notice that uh, um, about 30% of the patients uh, having AKI at the higher stage, stage three, and uh, some of them requiring renal replacement therapy. Um, Mortality, as you would expect, is, is correlating to the stage of AKI, and you can see that when we are going up to AKI stage uh, 3, we are having about a uh, six-fold uh, risk of uh, mortality for our patients. Um, that's what you expect. And then when you are looking um, at the most frequent causes and ideologies of AKI, it's Sepsis, by far the most frequent one, followed by hypovolemia, drug-related nephrotoxins, and uh, cardiogenic shock, cardiac surgery. And um, actually, these etiologies will be discussed by uh, the following speakers uh, in detail. Uh, with the development of um, AKI definitions over the rifle, AKIN, and finally the KDEGO stage in uh, definition in 2012, um, it was logical to develop some recommendations how to avoid uh, or to prevent deterioration of AKI in uh, patients uh, who are suffering from that disease. And we, this is 2012, and we from the AKI section of the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine um, wanted to upgrade these recommendations with specific uh, focus on patients in the intensive care unit. We came up with several recommendations, suggestions, and best practice statements. And I want to give you a quick overview of what uh, is the major take-home message for uh, preventing uh, deterioration of AKI or even development of AKI. Let's start with the first thing, well, the most important thing is avoiding nephrotoxicity. We have the usual suspects, and uh, I think these don't need more explanation, but I think one ex aspect has to be uh, be addressed more in detail. This is the question, what is the role of ionidated crown chest media and the critically ill patient and the uh, age of isoosmolar and low osmolar ionidated contrast media? Um, this is a, a very large um, match cohort analysis. They actually took 60,000 patients and then they ended up with about 7,000 patients where uh, they could adjustment and then uh, final um, about 2,500 patients where they could match one-to-one. -one. Those patients who got CT scan with and without contrast media. And uh, whereas in the unadjusted uh, analysis, it even looks as if the risk for AKI would be even lower when they get contrast paradoxically. When they did the matching, there was no difference. I think that's an important message. And this is from patients who had normal or nearly normal renal function with a GFR above 45. Uh, there was no signal in, in the match cohort uh, in terms of dialysis and no signal in terms of mortality within 30 days. Here's the, di the dialysis and the 30 days. So... What is about the cohort with uh, impaired renal function? They, they did uh, match cohort analysis also in this subgroup, which was still pretty big with 1,600 patients, and there was the same rate of AKI of those patients who had uh, contrast and those who had not. Um, there was one signal in terms of dialysis, which uh, uh, was slightly um, borderline significant, and there was a slightly high rate of uh, dialysis within seven days, but no uh, signal for uh, the mortality. Uh, but this is a bit difficult to interpret. So either there is a risk, and I think we have to consider this, or we have uh, we're confronted with sort of a RT reflex. I think you know this from daily practice. We have a patient who has free creatinine. He needs a CT scan with contrast, and afterwards we put him on the RT anyhow. So I think it might reflect this uh, also. Now, you see, the risk seems to be not so high for patients who are critically ill. So should we waste our time in doing any protective measurements against uh, contrast-associated AKI? How about 
volume expansion, how about n acetylcysteine? Let's start with volume expansion. I think this is a quite interesting um, um, study where they looked at different ratios of volume expansion in patients undergoing PCI. Um, and this was still a pretty large study with uh, about 1,500 patients. And you see there are four quartiles um, starting with low volume expansion of about below 7.8 milliliters per kilogram and the higher quartile with about above 17 milliliters per kilogram, which is pretty uh, much uh, because uh, then you end up in, in more than uh, 1.5 liters. They all got the same amount of contrast and paradoxically the rate of contrast associated AKI was not decreased with more volume. Uh, actually, the odds ratio is going in the wrong direction, so it seems to be increasing. And what is more concerning is the odds ratio for mortality was increasing the higher the procedural volume expansion was performed. So we are not doing anything good if we are just uh, putting in fluid into the into the patients. What about the other preventants? Anesthetic system did not work, um, and then I think we'll hear later in the day. Uh, by Claudio Ronco, um, sodium bicarbonate or N-acetylcysteine in the uh, preserved trial did not have an effect. So overall, uh, what we recommended is that when we do volume correction or uh, uh, hydration, we only do this in patients who are hypovolemic. We don't waste time on doing paraprocedural protective measurements and de delay the important uh, in investigation we need for our patients to just go ahead and do the investigation. Now, Continuing on nephrotoxicity, what about the fluids? Can they be nephrotoxic? I think this is a very well-known story about uh, starches uh, increasing the rate of AKI and renal replacement therapy in critically ill patients. Urelli sees such a clear statement from Cochrane um, <coughs> uh, group, and this was very clear. The mechanism is still somewhat unclear. Probably osmotic nephrosis plays a role, uh, which is uh, when osmotically... Uh, uh, effective substances are uh, reabsorbed in the proximal tubule and uh, stored in the lysosomal, the proximal tubules swell up. And this m they might impair renal function by that way. You can see this in a larger uh, magnification here. But this can be seen with every uh, osmotic substance which is filtered at the glomerulum. It had, there are case reports for all of these substances showing this picture, and I'm not sure if this is the uh, the whole story for the increased uh, rate of uh, AKI shown for star, uh, for uh, colloids. We don't have any negative signal for albumin. Um, actually, there are some data in randomized controlled trials showing that albumin even may facilitate a better negative fluid balance in sepsis, as been shown in the Albus trial. There's a small randomized trial showing a reduced AKI rate in cardiac surgery, but there's no damage signal. Uh, for albumin, I think that's uh, it's clear this hasn't this uh, potential and is actually pretty much uh, a method in in liver cirrhosis and hepatorenal syndrome. Um, the mm -hmm. saline versus balanced uh, crystallite story is also now coming very clear. Um, this is a study two years ago where there was uh, the, a smaller study, about 1,000 patients, still big, and they were... Uh, having an average volume of infusion about 1.5 liters. And at that study, there was no signal of um, harm at low volumes, about up to 2 liters. But then when the volumes got higher, the, 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 the signal clearly uh, became separate and there was a damage signal for saline seen. And it took about 14,000 patients to see the damage signal for uh, sodium chloride, even at low volumes, you see here, this is the SMART trial just published uh, on an average volume of 1,000 ml, mLs, and they had just the borderline significantly difference with a harm signal with a composite endpoint. There was no signal in the single endpoints like uh, renal replacement therapy or AKI or um, death, but there was the composite signal was here, and I think this is important. When you're treating patients, uh, patients in the medical unit, in the neurological units, patients with sepsis and patients who had previous RT, they had an enhanced risk of uh, developing uh, an, an endpoint for damage uh, when they were treated with normal saline. The most problem is, however, the biggest problem is, however, when we continuously overload our patients, uh, leading to a volume overload syndrome. I think this is uh, clear. Uh, now, it's, you don't need this dramatic picture. I think it's quite nice to see that 
any degree of peripheral edema is associated with AKI, and this has been shown in about 12,000 patients, and you see here this is the correlation with a, a de higher degree of edema versus no edema, and the black bars are the rates of AKI, and they are clearly uh, increased AKI stage 3, the more peripheral edema you see, and they also could show this association, which has also been shown by Legrand and co-workers before, that the higher the CVP, the higher the rate of AKI is that you can observe. Um, can you um, influence this? Uh, I mean, it has been shown by the FACT trial when you do a conservative strategy and they had a tendency to have less renal replacement therapy in the uh, conservative strategy versus the liberal strategy where you have a positive volume over seven liters over one week. Um, the interesting thing is that they could reduce CVP here and they needed diuretics uh, for having this conservative strategy. So the message is that uh, if you want to control for hypovolemia, you may use diuretics uh, to improve outcome and this is what we also recommended. You don't give diuretics just to, for a treatment of AKI but for volume uh, overload uh, you, should l you can use it as long as the kidney is responding. Now coming uh, to the most important thing, maintaining adequate renal perfusion, which I think is the key point, uh, but there are so many unclear uh, aspects, which mean arterial pressure, which CVP, how much fluids, uh, which way suppressor, and which inotrope, so you just have to individualize uh, these aspects. There are some rough guidelines you can use based on the studies which are uh, available, uh, and um, there is one thing I, I want to address about the aspect of individualizing. It might not be only the mean arterial pressure which, uh, we sh which should guide our uh, volume therapy. Uh, this is a retrospective analysis of patients after uh, cardiovascular surgery and uh, they were investigating those patients who developed AKI versus those who did not develop AKI and they were looking which changes in pressure were relevant for developing AKI. And it was not the mean arterial pressure, it was not so much the systolic arterial pressure, it was the diastolic arterial pressure. So drops in diastolic arterial pressures were associated with AKI. And on the other hand, it was an increase in CVP, which was associated with the, pati the patients who had a high rate of AKI. And overall, when you then calculate the difference, so it was the the mean perfusion pressure deficit and the mean diastolic perfusion pressure, uh, pressure deficit. So the difference between the diastolic pressure and the CVP, which seem to be more important. So maybe we have to think different. It's not only the mean arterial pressure. Uh, we have to consider also CVP or intra-abdominal pressure, which may be even higher than CVP in some patients. And then maybe this also has to guide our limit for the mean arterial pressure. So maybe we have to think, as we do it for the brain sometimes, about mean perfusion pressure, diastolic, even diastolic perfusion pressure for our kidneys, and then adjust uh, the pressure according to uh, the outflow parameters because uh, we might have congestion and we try to overcome this. Now coming to the, to the end, we have many interventions we should use. Would it not make sense to use all these preventative measures in a bundle? And how useful is this in the AKI? And how should we select the patients at risk? I think uh, Zarbok has very nicely shown us this. Um, and with this study where they selected patients who had obviously an increased risk profile by elevated renal biomarkers, so the, the cell cycle arrest markers were increased above 0.3, and then they were selected for randomizing them to doing a protective bundle or not. And this bundle included avoiding nephrotoxins, a blood sugar control, uh, um, alternatives to radio contrast media, and close hemodynamic moni monitoring and optimizing renal perfusion uh, and hemodynamics. And the interesting aspect of this study is it was one of the first studies who showing by using such a bundle you could significantly reduce the rate of AKI. And it was not only the uh, lower stages AKI, all AKI, the red bars are the reduction in severe higher stages AKI. Uh, and I think this is quite relevant. It's true that none of the secondary endpoints have been influenced by this study, but I think it's a first uh, approach and the first way uh, to go. And I think further studies will be necessary to show which uh, bundles are the best and how to select uh, 
uh, our patients. So <coughs> coming to the end, the specific methods to protect the kidney in, in the critical A 2018 is uh, in addition to avoid nephrotoxins, um, avoid hyperglycemia, ensure adequate urinary perfusion pressure, and as I said, on, don't only look at mean arterial pressure, we have to, to look at several aspects. Um, vasopressors and inotropes are used as needed for um, ad uh, ensuring adequate perfusion, and then most of all, we have to avoid this continuous long uh, lasting volume overload over several days using diuretics if possible and if necessary, and all this should be being best performed in bundles. So I think um, I could give you some direction. Um, the paper is uh, open access for download, and I uh, would be glad to ask to answer any questions. Thank you for your attention.